we are working <laughs> so welcome um if anybody rocks up if not never to mind because i have, probably have quite a lovely little time on my own but welcome to anybody who's able to join this in case you're unaware is the katie's arms now the katie's arms is a pub uh, that we run once a week katie's arms we even have our own glassware don't you know and normally hello lovelies our oh, island hello people join in and let you know where they're listening or watching from so that you can see if you think you're alone you're not now this will come as a surprise to some of you who aren't used to joining us but we have a pub um, we usually run it on Fridays. Pub doors are normally open at eight o'clock on Fridays. But here's the thing. Lovely Mark has got me performing in Berlin <laughs> at the weekend. We're sold out in Berlin. But what that means is I won't be here for Katie's Arms on Friday. So we're going a day early. Um, for newcomers, if you're new, please do mention in the little, hello, my loves from Wales, Scotland's here. Please do mention if you're new because people will welcome you in. Uh, Kingston upon Thames is here. Someone asking for my only fans. Seriously, you don't want that. No one needs that in their lives. It's not good, really. It's not good. It's not, you don't want to see it naked. All right. I don't know, do you have to be naked on OnlyFans? I've never looked on OnlyFans. Or do you just have to stand around going, mm, look at my boobs. Mm. Yeah, that wouldn't be very exciting either, honestly. Um, what should we say for newcomers? What should we tell people? Uh, it's always eight o'clock somewhere, exactly. What we should say about the pub is it's essentially me uh, as landlady. We started about four years or so ago. Our aim is to get people through life. And now our aim is to get people through this winter, because as you can see, things are getting more brutal. And the aim as well is just to laugh at me. Um, I have no filter. I make no apology. I have a lot of opinions and I say them exactly as I think them. Um, I aim to piss everybody off equally or nobody at all. Um, if you agree, that's great. But if you disagree, that's also great. And uh, if I may, if you're new, one of the things I think one of the big mistakes um, is that people say things like, oh, I usually agree with what you say, which is, very, which is very kind. But there's always this thing, right? If you agree with me, does that mean I'm right? And therefore, when you disagree with me, does that mean that you think I'm wrong? Because for that to be true, you would have to believe that you're right 100% of the time. And that's fine, because maybe you do think that. But it's just one of the weird things where people say, well, I don't always agree with you. And I always want to say, does that mean you're always right? Right? Anyway, you'll disagree with loads of things I say because my views are pretty strong and I don't have a filter. So the other thing we should warn people about if you're new um, is that, so this is my first glass of wine. I don't care if I drunk a bottle. I'm just updating you as some, some facts. But people who join here, particularly very small people with tiny cocks, or people who are a bit afraid by a woman who has her own views and doesn't really give a shit, or someone who doesn't need them for something or need to be liked or need to be paid by someone who doesn't have anyone she's trying to pleasure, mm -mm -mm, like everybody with a boss, um, is that I say exactly what the shit I think. So that's really difficult for some people because they're not used to a woman doing that, particularly not a woman that's known from being on TV back in the day before I was banned. And so the excuse for me is that I'm pissed or that I've got a brain injury. I have actually got a brain injury, but I'm not pissed. But if you need to excuse me away, we all understand. As for the brain injury, well, you know, it's done me quite a few favours, so I, I celebrate it. <laughs> My disabilities <laughs> are widely known. <laughs> I don't mind them. The only disability I have that I that kind of is a bit more, you know, so some of you know, I don't have, because I had so much of my brain removed. I don't have what you guys have, many of you. You have, and you don't even know you have it. Your body is able to know where you are in a room because of this magic power you have 
that judges where you are versus a wall or something else. Right, so there's a light here. Your body and mine on this side knows where that light is. So I could shut my eyes there and touch the light. This side of my body doesn't have that. So over here, I have no navigation whatsoever. It means I cannot walk straight. It means I don't know what this side of my body is doing. Unless I'm looking at my hand, I don't know where it is. And the same for my leg. So my left leg and my left foot in particular, unless I'm looking at it, I don't know where it is. And often, and I mean often, I will be sat at a table with someone and my left foot will go off on its own. Like it just goes off and has its own little day out. And when my left foot goes off, sometimes it goes up the leg of someone else, sometimes it's just fumbling around on their foot, appearing to stroke their foot. My left foot has been off to visit people at different tables, like at the table next to me before, and not until I look down and see my foot do I know where it's gone. And then I have to say, oh, sorry about my left leg. It does its own thing. And that sounds pretty weird, but I, I you know, I just thought I'd share that with you. We all have issues and mine are really quite freaky. So let's do some things, so many stories. I'm so far right, it's good. I know, I've got a line for my, oh God, I've got some things I have to tell you as well. Shall I do them quickly? Some things lovely Mark told me, I'm supposed to remind you, uh, we're gonna be doing a big tour. So anybody that feels that we're not seeing them on the mini tour that we're doing in a month's time, the big tour is going from April right through till end of July. It's gonna be massive and we will be coming where you are. And that will be coming out soon. And all I wanted to say on that was, if you do remember to just hop onto Katie's arms, Katie's arms, like this, like the pub, Katie's arms.com. Um, if you leave your email address there, you get told about tickets first and that's helpful because the tours always completely sell out. This little mini one I'm doing next month is completely sold out, right? And the other thing, oh yes, on the mini tour, there are just a few tickets in Blackpool and we added a date in London. So if that's helpful, that's what I'm supposed to tell you. Good, okay. I've got to say something about books, but we'll do that later. Bloody hell, so the government, mm, let's have a little drink. Everybody, anybody drinking with me? Cheers, am I coming to Bournemouth? sold out but again we'll be coming back for two dates i think in 2025 so keep your eyes peeled okay hold on mm -hmm. ah. Ah. first drink of the day people ask me why i drink this so most people say that this is shite but it's cheap and i don't have taste so i mean i do have taste i'm not that much of a spaz um, but I, uh, I mean, I'm happy with anything. I'm cheap as chips. I stay in a Premier Inn, I drink cheap wine, I'm a cheap date. So bastard, bastard, bastard Keir Starmer is now looking, they're launching a review, at the Modernisation Committee. <clears throat> I'm not allowed to do Joey Deacon, but it's called the Modernisation Committee. Keir Starmer is freaking fully Kim Jong Starmer, isn't he? The Modernisation Committee will look at the advantages of outside paid engagement, such as media appearances. So the plan is, Keir Starmer wants to ban Nigel Farage and Lee Anderson, for that matter, from being able to be on GB News. So in order to make, to square that circle, the aim is that they will ban Nigel and Lee from being able to be on GB News as hosts. So they are now launching something in the Modernisation Committee, which will basically say you're not going to be allowed to host your own show, presumably, on other networks. And, you know, you can't help but feel like the ban of smoking in pub gardens is also just a joke, you know, at Nigel Farage's expense just to piss him off. But bloody hell, the guy's a freak. The Modernisation Committee. OK, can I just say as well? I am going to um, Berlin to perform. <laughs> that makes it sound a bit like I'm, you know, <laughs> performing. No, I, does it make it sound like that? Probably not, probably not. But I'm going to Berlin, to Berlin, to support, perform for the Germans. Now my concern is I find myself 
hilarious. And I find myself hilarious when I'm doing the impression of the Germans. And my problem is I'm going to Berlin to do a performance. <laughs> and I think if I get like nervous because they are the Germans, I might go into my German. And my suspicion is that the Germans do not find my German very amusing. <laughs> Question. Should I do my German impression? Should I sing them 10 German bombers or not? Is the view, I'm guessing the view here is not. I hear you. And I will update you about how it goes in the Berlin with the Katie Hopkins in the Berlin when I get back. <laughs> Something tells me it might not go as well as I hope, but I am wearing my power suit. So I have a power suit that lovely Mark made me buy. and I'm wearing that. So that even if I'm like a massive twat in what I say, I will look very good. Will that work? Was it Germans when I'm doing my hello, hello? Um, right, what, how, so many things to talk about. Oh my God, I know, I know. Yeah, no, don't do it. Maybe not. Shit, don't mention, do not mention the war. Fuck, you know what's gonna happen. I know what's gonna happen. I must not drink, I must not drink, I must not have a drink. Before I stand up in front of the Germans and tell them that we run the war and we have a better sense of no. <gasps> this is a nightmare. I never said this was a good idea. This was lovely Mark. He planned it, he sold the tickets, now it's sold out. Half of the Berlin is coming. Fuck. Right, um, what did I want to say? Yes, Rachel Reeves, she's also a friggin' maniac, isn't she? Her with the, you know the one? With the ceramic bob head. She's got like that dark hair that's cut like here. And it looks like it's made out of ceramic. Like it's attached, you know like Lego? When you get Lego and you get like the hair and you put the Lego, Oh, we need to make a Lego Rachel Reeves. Lego Keir Starmer and Lego Rachel Reeves. Why have we not done this already? That hair that you get that you just put on the head, that's what she does in the morning. She just gets her ceramic bob head that she keeps on some sort of heating thing overnight, just puts it on her head. And it just makes, it's like a deeply evil ceramic bob head that she puts on. And as soon as she puts it on, evil power flows into her two fucking brain cells. And then she goes, right, now we we're gonna take the, we're gonna take the fuel from petulous, fuck them. I don't know if she speaks like that, but you know. Oh, now we're going to take their bus passes so they die in the cold, lonely and alone and, and sad. Because there's a black hole. I tell you where there's a black hole, love. There's a black hole between your fucking earlobes. That's why there's a black hole from here to here. As for your other black holes, no one's ever been near them, I hope to God. Has Rachel Reeves ever reproduced? Are there small Reeves? I know you shouldn't question people's children, but has Rachel Reeves ever reproduced? Because I friggin' hope not. You know, one shouldn't wish sterility on anyone, and I genuinely don't. But I genuinely hope that woman has never had offspring, because one Rachel Reeves is quite enough. She is a nasty, sulfuric little biatch with ceramic bob head. And I, I have a good mind. When I get my hands on her, and I don't mean this in a physical or violent way, when I find that bird, I am going to verbally tear her a new one. Because she is vile. She's what did she what did she bill the taxpayer three thousand six hundred pounds was it question mark for her heating, and she wants to take three hundred quid off a little old lady who's barely got a crocheted blanket to sit under and no meat on her bones. I tell you, I tell you, if so, I'm trying to get um, this is unrelated but sort of related. I'm trying to get a compensation fund from Kings Lynn for cancelling um, one of my stand up gigs. If I get that fund, I tell you, I am going to walk it round to every old person who has had their heating allowance taken. And I don't care if it will only do a handful of them. We will sort this out one by one because ceramic bob head, sulfuric vagina, Rachel Reeves can officially do one. And if they want to arrest me for saying her two words about Rachel Reeves, I've got a whole lot more of them. So, so bring it, bring it because, because anybody as disgusting as to go after our elderly just when it's about to be winter and let me say today fucking freezing it's freezing it's dark already what time is it it's like five o'clock well it's seven but you know exaggeration is everything it's cold 
you wouldn't tell old people not to turn the heating on. These old people, lots of them, they're not like us. They're not like, oh, sod this, I'm that miserable, I'm turning the heating on. They will literally won't turn it on. They will die rather than put the heating on and get in debt. I say this and I encourage you, if you're old and you're watching this, I'm so sorry for my language, but fuck it, put the heating on. If you die in debt, don't even worry about it. I know you were good people and you were brought up the right way, but don't even. You do what you have to do to get through this. And damn it. Right, okay, that was a good rant. Let's have a little sip. It is disgusting. It is. My, an old lady cancelled her TV licence because she can't afford it. Well, just keep watching the telly. And if you get any trouble, just get in touch with me. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. But because of my various issues, I have the need to fix the world. So I will just sort it out somehow. Honestly, honestly, just don't be cruel. You know what I mean? Give your multi-million pound contracts to your multi-million bum chums. You know, whatever. Give Ed Miliband all the money for Africa. Whatever. I, whatever. But do not make our old people feel like they can't put their heating on. Fuck off. Okay. What do I want to tell you about so many things? We will do Kate Garraway. Okay, you have my word. Before we go, we will talk about Kate Garraway. You know and I know it will end up in trouble. And you know and I know it will end up with people writing me emails telling me they hope I die. Or that I get caught in some car accident and the car is on fire with me trapped in it. Okay, that's what's going to happen. I'm telling you now because it happened last time. But we will discuss Kate Garraway in a little moment. But there are some other things I did want to say. Look, I made all sorts of notes for you. Yes. Oh, gosh. So Alex Belfield, may I? Oh, please do. I will. I will. Oh, to be in Katie's arms. Yes, it's all right. I've had a shower, good underwear. I shaved my armpits. Actually, I'm quite a reasonable individual. I put deodorant on this morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty good, actually. Have I shaved my legs? I don't know. Hmm, you can pretend, but no. Um, Alex Belfield, so a number of people asking me. So my friend Alex Belfield, two years ago yesterday, we were on stage in Blackpool, sold out. Now he's in prison. And the question was, would he be released as part of the early release scheme? Because as you know, the government, Keir Starmer, are letting out actual criminals in order that they can put, you know, Janet, aged 54, who made one Facebook post saying, fuck them, or whatever she said about, you know, illegals, um, in order that they can lock up people from, you know, the far, 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 right. They've let out actual illegals. But of course, the person they haven't let out is Alex Belfield, who is locked up for the crime of mm, making some videos about the BBC. If you're not an Alex Belfield lover, totally fine. If you think he was a proper stalker, totally fine. Whatever you think. I'm just saying they haven't let him out, but they have let out guys who uh, have raped their wives or have raped women or domestically abused their women or held people up at gunpoint. You know, and at this point, you know, best of luck to everybody, quite frankly, every man for themselves. I wish everyone the best. But the fact that Alex Belfield still hasn't been allowed out even to DCAT, where you're allowed to come in and out a bit and there's a bit of flex and is, you know, next level. And I heard Jeremy Vine discussing the early release scheme. And Jeremy Vine is the guy who went to court and cried about how scared he was about Alex Belfield that got Alex put away for five years. And of course, if you know Alex Belfield, even you, you could think whatever you want to think about him, but you'll realise that if you're scared of Alex Belfield, you're freaking scared of your own reflection. Like he's about the least scary guy I've ever met. In fact, I don't know anybody I would be less scared of. Truly. So there's that. Um, now, there's all sorts of other things I need to tell you about. The near-death experience of my mother. I have a parrot in my house. Don't ask me about that, but we can talk about it. I also, oh, I also wanted to talk to you about Elle, the body McPherson. You've got choices here, guys, what we want to talk about. Can we talk about, um, oh God, it's not Friday. I'm so confused. I've no wine. What? What? Hollow willy booby. Oh, should we go to gossip about the NTAs, shall we? It's very tempting. Let's do one last sensible thing and then let's gossip. 
it's okay so yes it's not friday um it is thursday it's seven o'clock well seven twenty not eight o'clock i know the whole world's gone crazy but why haven't you got wine in i mean jesus always have emergency wine in i don't know what you have to go without to have that but have it on hand so yeah we've gone a day early because i have to be in berlin to do the stand up with the germans and everybody here thinks my stand-up with the Germans is going to go very, 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 very well. Yes, very, very well. Where have I gone now with that? I don't know. Can I just say, Elle, the body, McPherson, I've loved her forever. I spent quite a bit of time in Australia when I was very, well, I was 17. I was going to say very young. Makes me sound like I was given away when I was a baby. Um, Elle McPherson, I love her with all my soul. I think she's amazing. I think she's hotter than the sun. I've always wanted to have Elle McPherson's A body, B tits, but mostly boobs, honestly. She just, she's just brilliant. So she's doing some interview thing. I read here that she's 60 year old. Is 60? She's 60? Yes. 60 years old, which is rude because she looks five and her boobs are still like, they're like round, but also still like, perky and pointy like the nipples are still like that way how does that happen no one knows so she is 19 yes yeah, so she's 60 years old so she's doing an interview lovely lovely ll lovely lovely and she just happens to mention she's got great hair as well she happens to say oh i had breast cancer seven years ago and i have beaten it and she had like a lumpectomy and then she chose to go down a different path of how she dealt with it. Now, obviously, Elva Body McPherson has some things available to her. She took herself away, I think, somewhere warm. She had like a, a cool holistic therapist. I think she had like a some sort of bone specialist and she had, so she would have had lots of advice and help, but she basically tried to say, oh yeah, seven years ago, I got breast cancer. I kept it to myself. I had a lumpectomy and then I chose a path that was I thought best suited to me and I'm, I'm through it and I'm cured. And she said, and it took courage because I was supposed to have chemotherapy, radiotherapy, yada yada, bloody blah, 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 drugs, blah, blah, blah. And I chose a different path. And I'm telling you, I haven't had it. I haven't had breast cancer. So what do I know? Clearly I'm not a medical profession. So what do I know? I'm just me. So what do I know? But the horrible, cowbag bitchy bastards coming for Elle McPherson. If ever there was something that made you think it's odd this cancer thing and how they push one thing only. This Elle McPherson, so there was a revolting article in the Guardian by Gabby Hinsliff, I don't know who she is, looks like she needs a shower or at least a hairdryer. I mean, Jesus, what happened? Did it, did it rain on the way to work? Or are you just looking miserable so that you look like a fucking lefty? Is that it? If you look a bit sour and put on a shit pullover, does that make you more credible as a journalist for the fucking Guardian? I mean, God's sake, love, make a fucking effort. You know what I mean? Gabby Hinsliff, the other one, and it's even worse, um, is Catherine with a C. Bennett, I believe it's double N E E double T, yeah, Catherine Bennett. So the editor of The Observer uh, then launched Catherine Bennett at L the Body McPherson, and what she wrote was properly vile. Like nothing I have ever written nor said is vile at the level that this filth, Catherine Bennett, was vile. Why would The Guardian be so desperate to target women readers with women writers to persuade them that it's wrong to think for yourself when it comes to bodily autonomy. This is the same Guardian, of course, that pushes abortion left, right and Chelsea. But if you want to have bodily autonomy about, say, cancer treatment, oh, suddenly you're the devil. It's very off. I have my own views about what I think I would do if it were me. I'd still like L the body McPherson's tits. I'm just going to say that. But the Guardian, Catherine Bennett, if you're listening, you lefty cock wombling twat spangling a bitch of a cow, you are friggin' disgusting. 
nothing I have ever even thought in my head comes close to the sort of reprehensible gutter filth that you penned at the behest of your editor. I'm assuming you're mm, uh, blowing or licking your editor for cash. Disgusting woman. Okay, that made me feel quite a lot better. How's everyone doing? Good. Mm. Ah. Shall we talk about the National Television Awards? <laughs> okay, we always finish on time because I respect other people's time. Uh, on that note, I'm always early for everything. I'm never late and I cannot abide people who say oh 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 I'm sorry I'm late the traffic was terrible I always say and please do do this in your life in your life if you're you know your sort of person like me who doesn't like to waste other people's time because I have respect for it if you're at a meeting say and people say I'm so sorry I'm late the traffic was terrible please do say oh yes I went through that same traffic it's why I left on time, because I value your time. Please do hit them with that. I use it every single time. I'm not ashamed to say it, because I would rather do that than say, hey, no problem. Yeah, the traffic's terrible. No, 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 no. They know that, that's a bullshit excuse. And it just means that they think their time is more valuable than yours. And it's not. No one's time is more valuable than yours, because you live your own life. Okay, good. Okay, go. At the NTAs <laughs> getting a ward for dead Derek. Oh my god, Aww. Kate Garraway with the thick hair back again to talk about dead Derek because I would very much like to thank the pharmaceutical industry for their funding of my ITV documentaries, which has meant that everybody now gets to see my face again. And because of Dead Derek's long COVID, my career is doing better than it has ever done before. And I am here to accept your applause because I am basically Mary at this point that gave birth to Jesus. Because no one may criticise me because my husband died. No, may, no one may criticise me because I am oh, the patron saint of long COVID. And no one may criticise me because her are my children and no one may say a bad thing about me because I have thick hair, I lost my husband and I'm representative of all those who died from the COVID and whether my daughter has her left tit out or not and whether my daughter has her left tit out and is showing most of her groin we will not say a bad word about the children because my name is Kate Garraway with the thick hair available for speaking engagements, funerals and future documentaries at the ITV. Before Dead Derek died, my career was going down the shitter. But now I've been pushing Dead Derek around even after he was dead and we invited the Sun photographer to his deathbed so we definitely knew when he died as opposed to when he wasn't actually dead yet. He just looked dead. I am on the uppity uppity up. And if it wasn't for the fact that Alison Hammond is a fucking chumba wumba and ate all of the Bake Off tent, I would have that contract as well. <laughs> thank you, thank you, cry, 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 thank you. <laughs> no, exactly, she's great, she's great. I'm absolutely very much looking forward to floaty dress season and spring, aren't you all? Aren't you all? Because then we will have Kate Garraway finding love hmm? just in time for a Zara maxi dress in coral <laughs> as for freaking holly willow booby did you see the face did you, did you, did you, did you, did you? <laughs> so she's next to her husband dan i know some things about dan but basically dan her husband very high up in tv land it's why he was part of the commissioning process so if there was a new program being commissioned Dan would be behind it. He would insert his wife. That's how that whole system worked. You see the two of them last night. Oh, did you see that? I could smell. I can smell envy. I can smell green and I can smell je jealousy. And she obviously, she was told, you go out there, girl. You put on your little frock. Try and get some boobs out. You go and be Holly Willow booby. And everyone was like, oh, is that Holly? 
Isn't she fucking, isn't she the friend of the pedo? Yeah, what's she doing here? Don't know. She's not on TV anymore. No, fuck it. Does she got another Marks and Spencer's? No. Oh, fuck it. What's she doing here then? Don't know. Who's that? Oh, that's her skinny husband. Not very good looking, is he now? I've heard he's got a small cock as well. Oh, hmm, hmm. Well, you know, she's a has-been. <laughs> Look, it's one minute to go. Um, I hope <laughs> people laughing along at me. Um, do laugh at me. It's absolutely fine. I make no apologies for myself or anything I say. Um, if you're laughing at me, then you're laughing. And if we're laughing, we're winning. Far too many people out there take themselves far too seriously and they want to give you the impression and the illusion that they're speaking freely when they're doing anything but. Frankly, I have nothing to lose. Everything I owned before was taken from me. And so this is why I'm as free as I am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your support. Oh, this will set me off, won't it? Thank you for all the kindness. If I could just show you, this is going to set me off. The orders. Um, I let you know that Lovely Mark was back and that the shop was open. And I let you know that uh, I was signing, hand signing personally with personal messages to everybody. My latest book, True. Um, and I'm doing 100 a day. And I love it because it's a blessing. And so many of you are going through so much in it. And that sets me off as well. Everybody going through a hard time or chemo or struggling or, you know, not sure that they can make it. All of you, uh, I don't deserve this much support. But please know your books. I'm doing them in order, 100 at a time. They're hitting the post. Every message from me is personal from me. And... Um, and it's been overwhelming, but I wanted to say thank you very much. So thank you for all your kindness. I will see you uh, somewhere on the road. And please, from the bottom of my heart, do not let these bastards get you down. You keep smiling because when you smile, it really, really pisses off the miserable bastards who are trying to make you do something quite different. OK, have a great weekend. I will be in Zabalin. Oh, fuck. Ha, ha, ha.